Hi everyone, Budget Stark here. Thanks again for tuning in. We are in Hong Kong right now and I'm with Justin. We're on the way to Secret Base. As you know, the flagship store in Hong Kong. So once we get there, we're gonna have a look around. Hopefully we can take some footage and see what goodies they have on store for us today. I'm really excited and we're not just doing Secret Base, we're doing Rebel Base and we're doing Echo Base. So all the bases and Budget's gonna show us what's in store. Let's get into it. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel and a massive thank you goes out to Budget Stark for that intro. Seriously, it's been far too long since we've seen Budget back on YouTube talking about hot toys but he agreed to make a cameo in my store. Two videos starting off with this one, the Secret Base Tour and this is it right here. I am so freaking excited to get stuck in. Before we do though, a shout out to Ryan Kirkwood of course for coming along and helping me shoot all of these videos. You may actually see him pop up every now and then in the videos. Now for those wondering, hey Justin, what the heck is Secret Base? I hear you mention it all the time in your preview videos, but what is the darn thing? Well, it's basically a massive showroom for Hot Toys. It's their flagship store. Now I do use the term store quite loosely because they don't actually sell much yet. They do sell a couple of bits and pieces, but for the most part, it's for pre-orders. You come in, you line up, because that's how you pre-order figures in Hong Kong. You have to come in person. You sign the slip, you go away, and come back in a year to pick up your item. Also, if stuff is broken, this is where you come. You come and exchange the bits and pieces, and they give you a replacement. Plus, my favorite part about Secret Base, of course, the prototypes. You all have seen them in the preview videos, and now you're seeing them actually in video. When Hot Toys announce something, or if they never release something, chances are you'll see it at Secret Base. As soon as they put up that announcement, they'll pop it in this cabinet so you can take a gander before you put your money down and do your pre-order. Plus for figures that unfortunately never made it into production, sometimes those prototypes are still seen in Secret Base, so you're probably gonna spot quite a few of them in this very video. And the last reason for being for Secret Base is to showcase some freaking sick poses. They do not care about damaging these figures because they made the darn thing, so if they get torn or damaged or the material gets all creased up and nasty, they do not care because they have plenty more in the back, so they can go crazy with posing. And some of these poses are truly insane. I wish I could copy them, but we all know that if we did, then chances are we'd probably ruin our figures and we don't have a bunch spare in the back like Hot Toys do. But that Spider-Man display incredible and that was just the first one the second big display as soon as you turn the corner is the iron man captain and they have so many iron man figures they have got a mix of museum slash character poses and dynamic poses as well they've also split it up into themes we've got neon tech down below we've got war machine and we've also got the villains with iron monger whiplash mark 2 and whiplash mark 1 but in the center I don't even really know how to describe this. I mean, there are so many Iron Man figures. We've got the die-cast line down below. Then up top, we've got some quarter-scale figures flanking the Hall of Armor. And all the way at the tippity-top, some exclusive colorways, because Hot Toys, they're all about repainting Iron Man figures. Off to the right, this has actually moved since the last time I've been here. Last time, they had Age of Ultron and Avengers 1 in a different spot, but now it's in the Iron Man cabinet. A little bit more of a close-up on some of the crazy poses that they're pulling off with these Iron Man figures, and some of the more boring ones too. Looking at you, Mark II diecast, just standing straight up and down. But I don't want to make it sound like it's a bad thing. Having a good mix of poses is really important, because the figures with the most dynamic poses, they stand out the most. So if you have a figure that you want to kind of blend into the background, like this Hall of Armor display, just stand them straight up and down, and you'll be able to get that done. As you can see, the clear focus here is the Mark 42 diecast, the Iron Man 3 propulsion test Tony, and also Pepper Potts just standing off to the side there. Plus, for some reason, they've also popped the Mark 1 diecast there. This display is a little bit higgledy piggledy, but that pop of light at the back with the Stark Industries light box, I'm actually kind of considering getting one for myself, my own Iron Man collection. Now, moving off to the right side of the room. It's kind of this U-shaped alcove that you saw a little bit earlier. We have the Avengers display, Infinity War and Endgame merged into one. 
plus the Spidey display down below, and oh yes, some prototypes, friends, or more specifically, <laughs> Just one, it's the new version of Green Goblin. They still have the accessories on display in the little cards explaining that he has multiple different looks, but seeing him here with the old school Toby, the amazing Spider-Man 2 Spidey, and the integrated suit in a beautiful dynamic pose, it just sets the scene tremendously. And of course, off to the side, quarter scale Spidey. So to answer that question, can you pose quarter scale figures with 1 6 scale figures and have it look good? Well, they've done so in this display, and yeah, I think it does. This little cabinet is a bit of a weird one, so down below we have the Venom stuff. We've got Venom Pool, Venomized Iron Man, and Venomized Venom. Then directly above them, Mantis and She Hulk, who, by the way, looks really epic. She's super tall, and that new silicon body, very impressive. Then we have Shang-Chi, and up above him, a super uber dynamic action pose with Black Widow fighting Taskmaster. Above them, we've got the Falcon and the Winter Soldier display with Cap and Bucky, and I am so tempted to steal that pose for Cap, because having the asymmetry with the wings, oh, chef's kiss, well done Hot Toys, and whoever does the opposing. Now, there are a lot of cos babies here, Hot Toys, apparently they sell a lot of cos babies in Hong Kong. I was genuinely curious, and I asked the staff, is this something that does well? And they said, oh yeah, it definitely does. So that's why you'll see so many cos babies. Also, should have mentioned this earlier, but thank you to the secret base staff, because usually they don't allow videos at the store, but this time they let us film. Now we do have some Mandalorian goodness here, and this is a massive cabinet for Mando, as it should be. Mando, it was a reinvigoration for Star Wars. So Hot Toys giving this display some prime real estate with Clone Wars up above, I have no complaints whatsoever, and seeing some of these poses, Hot Toys, you have outdone yourselves. I know, I've already gushed about the poses, but seriously, if you have one of these figures and you fancy one of these poses, pause the video. Zoom in, steal the pose, and do it in your own display. We also have some Solo goodness with a Patrol Trooper, and Solo Maul, and regular Han Solo, and Mud Trooper Han Solo. Then above them, little baby Grogu, but he ain't so little, it's the life-size one. This one, though, didn't have any splitting on the chin, so I guess Hot Toys have taken care of their display model, or switched it out from time to time. And the big bad boy himself, quarter-scale Mando. Now, let's call this display the Imperial Display, or Rogue One. On one side, with the Imperial Star Wars light box in a very ominous red, we've got the Stormtrooper Gang with the Death Trooper Specialist, and off to the right, the Light Side Gang with the Rebellion symbol in blue. Also, more prototype goodness, the B2 Super Battle Droid, and he is huge. Seriously. I can't overstate how big that battle droid was. I never thought he was going to be as big as he is, but he is absolutely going to stand out in the display. Once again, the poses are straight fire. We also have some classic sideshow goodness with the diorama down below for Yoda's hut. Then the two-pack with the New Hope Stormtroopers, a grail that I kind of wish I got back in the day. And this is ingenious. Hot Toys, they have used a light box as a stand for Darth Vader with that red light coming up from underneath him. Oh, it sets the scene so freaking well. So those round light boxes, you could totally use them as display bases, and I never even thought to do that. But you see, Hot Toys, they made these things, so they could have fun with it, and that's exactly what they've done. Original trilogy time in reverse chronological order, starting down the bottom, Return of the Jedi, and yeah, you can spot quite a few sideshow figures there, and Hot Toys, you see, what they do is they replace those sideshow figures in the display when they make their own versions, so maybe that's a teaser of what to come. In the middle, we have A New Hope, but also Empire, and up top, Return of the Jedi, but also Kenner Boba Fett, and also more Empire. So it's kind of a best hits for the original trilogy. I had to do a close-up of this shelf, because that pose with the New Hope, Luke, and Leia, I am so tempted to copy that in my display. It looks so natural, and kind of gives me the vibes of the original poster, with Luke standing there with his lightsaber in the air. I know, 
It's not quite that pose, but still, it gives me that vibe. Now, we do have some more Imperials off to the side in this cabinet. We've got some gaming figures down below for Battlefront, some exclusives, your grandma's fine China Stormtrooper, the animation Boba Fett, and the Stealth Stormtrooper, some Chrome Boys with the Chrome Clone, the Chrome Death Trooper, and the Copper Chrome Stormtrooper, and up top, to finish it off, the Quarter Scale Boba Fett. So this kind of gives you an idea of the layout and everything. It's very Star Wars themed. I mean, those windows, they genuinely look like Star Wars doors. They also have screens playing clips from the films that the figures below are supposed to be based off above the cabinets themselves. Now, if you're wondering why you just saw T2 above the sequel trilogy display, well, that's because that display used to belong to Terminator, but now it's sequel trilogy. They don't have all of the sequel trilogy figures out here, but... They've got a good selection. I mean, we've got the First Order on the left, and on the right, some of the light side heroes, plus more First Order. I think even Hot Toys will admit that they made way too many First Order Stormtrooper variants. There have been a ton of them. Then up top, we have Last Jedi, and we also have The Rise of Skywalker as well. It's kind of all merged into one. The sequel trilogy display, I think it looks good. And those of you out there who like the sequel trilogy, like my friend Will, you're probably going to dig the poses. But a lot of you all out there, you probably won't. Because I know, it ruffled a lot of feathers. So moving on to Terminator. We have some Terminator Salvation figures down below. And also on the second shelf. And a really interesting one is the T-1000. As you can see, his head, it kind of looks frosted over. And no, it's not supposed to look that way. That's actually the hand-painted original prototype painted by J.C. Hong. And over the years, the paint has faded. It's reacted with the elements and the air, and it has definitely taken on a really unique appearance. So it's a one of a kind. It's a snapshot of Hot Toys history. In the Predator display down the bottom, we've got some really big pieces, including a classic Predator statue, the Cinema Kept Predator. Now, above that, some Hot Toys goodness, and they have made a ton of Predators. I kind of wish they would make even more, like potentially the Fugitive Predator from the not-so-popular, more modern-day Predator film, but still goes to show that they have made quite a few, and if you're a fan of those classic Pred films, there is absolutely every reason to go ahead and pick up your favorite one in 1-6 scale. By the way, I don't mean to gloss over the aliens. Yes, I can see them. There's alien statues here, but there are also 1-6 scale figures, including the Power Loader and Ripley. Then to the right, this is a blast from the past. On the bottom, we have Planet of the Apes figures. Yes, Hot Toys made those. Then Mars Attacks, classic. Then above that, Hot Toys Jake Sully. So we are getting a little bit newer. Then above Jake Sully, the 2019 Hellboy, who is an incredible figure from, unfortunately, a not-so-incredible film. Then, right up the tippity-top, we have Clash of the Titans. I didn't actually know Hot Toys made this one, but there it is, as plain as day, holding Medusa's head. This display, though, oh my word, I was so excited when I walked into the store and saw this. It's the 89 Batman display. We've got the new 89 Batman, who looks awesome awesome in person. Trust me, I didn't know how good this thing looked until I saw it in person, and it's a big upgrade over the DX original. Also, the bat computer is massive, so I have no idea where I would fit the thing in my display. This, though, is also massive. It's the ATRT Walker, and we also have an AF Trooper, and we have the Heavy Clone Trooper down below, who I'm pretty sure you can only get with the Bark Speeder. Not currently on display at Secret Base. I kind of wish they would sell that little wall diorama, though, and the backdrop, because I've said it before, I'll say it one more time, it sets the scene beautifully. If you are wondering where the rest of the Endgame figures were, they have their own little display. Now, it's not everyone from Endgame, it's not the full comprehensive line, but still, it does the job. Then, more Cos Babies. I don't really have a ton to add here, but they exist in multiple different sizes. That huge Grogu looks kind of creepy, and these are readily available for sale in the store, so if you find that you absolutely must have a Cos Baby, then chances are you can probably find it on display at Secret Base, and then buy it if you so choose to. Now, this little alcove to the left of the door as you're facing the exit is kind of the DC display, but also the Back to the Future display, and 
also the we need the poo display and the video game display and the Michael Jackson display, it's a catch-all. If they didn't have somewhere to put these figures in the store in one of the other displays, chances are you're going to find them here. Now, this is the Arkham display, and once again, those poses, they are working it. That Batgirl pose as she's jumping forward with the grappling hook, I am so tempted to steal that one as well. Then we have a massive Harley section. I really like that light box, actually, how it blinks on and off. It just adds some atmosphere to the Harley display. And down the bottom... The Suicide Squad line, which does mostly consist of Jokers, Tuxedo Joker, Arkham Joker, Purple Coat Joker, and also Imposter Joker. Now for quarter scale figures, we do have the quarter scale Batman Begins, the Dark Knight, and Joker. So pretty much the full line so far. I am hoping we get more quarter scale figures. I would love a quarter scale Catwoman. And before you ask, no. That's not the new quarter scale Batman, he's actually on display at another store, and yes we did do a tour of the store, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. We also have Batman Forever, Sonar, Suit, Batman and Robin, then two Prime 1 statues, and a Sideshow Catwoman. Bit of a weird choice, but still, pretty sick statues, can't fault them. This Snyderverse section though, this is it for me, I'm a massive Snyderverse fan, and that Batman pose, plus the Flash pose, and Aquaman with his leg up on the stand there, oh wow, Hot Toys, you all know exactly how to pose your own figures. We also have the Bat, the Tumblr, and multiple different versions of the DeLorean, Back to the Future 1 and 2. We have Ed 209 off to the side, in the right side of this main display, then multiple different versions of Robocop and Alex Murphy, G.I. Joe Retaliation, and a classic, the Hot Toys Godfather. Then it works its way into a completely out there section. We've got Michael Jackson, Bruce Lee, other singers, and the Johnny Depp collection. Then above that, Pennywise, Alita, John Wick, Neo from the Matrix, Cyberpunk, Johnny Silverhand, Maleficent, Belle, Winnie the Pooh, and so many Metal Gear Solid figures up on top. So literally, like I said before, this display is a catch-all. I'm not gonna lie. I did miss this display when I did my first walkthrough, but I came back and I spotted it. It's tucked around the corner, it's really hard to spot, but it's Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor Ragnarok. And yes, you can see my reflection and budget Starks in the cabinet there, so like I promised, more cameos. In all seriousness though, this has been such a fun video to put together, seeing the poses, seeing the displays, how they've laid everything out, it truly is special. If you can get to Secret Base, if you can fly to Hong Kong and make a trip of it, absolutely do. I also have to once again say a massive thank you to both Budget Stark and Ryan for helping me film this video. Y'all are both legends. Y'all will absolutely want to hit that subscribe and bell notification icon though because the store that we're going to next is in the hot toys store there which is rebel base it'll be interesting because it's a lot different much more upmarket. Rebel base is our next stop. Let's go.